Welcome to Touch Technology Review. In this very brief tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to quickly and easily export your sequence to a video file that's suitable for upload to YouTube. There's a number of ways of doing this. I'm gonna show you the simplest way that I use for the production of my videos on this channel. And also while I'm at it, I'm gonna quickly show you how I set up my sequence when I first open up Adobe Premiere Pro CC. And essentially this is gonna be your complete workflow on creating your initial sequence setup and exporting your video to the right file format. So let's get started. As I mentioned earlier, before I show you how to export your movie file, I'll quickly set up a new sequence based on two factors. The first one being that I shot all my footage on a Panasonic 4K camcorder and also a Canon 5D Mark II and wish to combine my footage of differing specifications. Secondly, I'm going to want to export the video out to full HD being 1920 by 1080 and my target will be a YouTube. So based on that information, I'll choose the DSLR 1080p video preset in the sequence setup window. Now, once you open up Premiere to create a new sequence, you'll select the option from the file menu, file, new and sequence, or press command N. Now on the left hand side, you'll see a number of available presets. I'm going to go down to the digital SLR option. I'm going to click on the little arrow to the left and I'll see a drop down where I can then choose between 1080p, 480p and 720p. As mentioned earlier, I want the 1080p format. So I'll select the arrow and go to the drop down. And within this drop down, I can select between 24, 25, and 30 frames per, per second. Now, depending on the type of footage of shot, whether it's static or contains some motion, you're gonna to wanna to go for the higher frame rate of 1080p 30. So let's select that one. Now, before I click on OK down the bottom of the screen there, I'm just gonna give my sequence a name, and I'm gonna call this YouTube Export. and then I'll click on OK. Now we have a new sequence set up and ready to go. The first thing I'll do is drag some footage from the left hand side, just for this example, so I can show you how to export it. So I'll go into the project window on the left and drag a little clip of footage onto the timeline. Now, when you drag some footage from the project window over to your timeline that you've just set up, Premiere by default will ask you if you wish to change your sequence settings to match the footage. Now, this may be applicable in some circumstances, but in this case where I have already determined the dimensions of my sequence based on my requirements, I'm going to keep my existing settings and not overwrite them with that of the video footage that I'm dragging in. So I'll click on keep existing settings. For the benefit of this example, I'm going to drag a few clips on the timeline. To speed things up, I won't perform any edits, but obviously if you're going to be making a movie, I'm sure many hours will transpire before you're ready to export. When you have finished your masterpiece and you're ready to go, the first thing I'd like you to do before you run your export is drag the marker that you'll see at the top of the sequence window, which I'm dragging across to the left and right at the moment to the end of your last clip. Once you've done this, you're ready to go. Go to File, Export, and Media, or you can use the keyboard shortcut, Command and M. Now, once you do this, a window appears in the middle of your screen, and there's a number of things you need to look at before you finalize your export. Now, again, there are a number of different settings that you could use to export to YouTube. I'm going to show you the ones that I use that give me the best results that are a good compromise between quality and a small file size for easy uploading. So the first thing I'm going to do is change the format and make sure it's selected to H.264. Now, because I had set up the DSLR 1080p format, by default, the H.264 format may already appear. If it's not selected, go into that option and select H264. Okay, the next option you come across is the preset. 
click on this and scroll all the way down to the bottom and it's the second last option for me which is YouTube 1080p HD. Now obviously if you're wanting to go to half HD being a 1280 by 720p format you could select YouTube 720p HD for example or if you're going for 4k you could go to YouTube 2160p 4k. But uh, as mentioned, I'm going to go with a 1080p format, so I'll select that option. Before we go and select export from the list of options down the bottom, you'll notice that you can change your output name. So it's already given the video file the name of my sequence that I set up earlier, so I'm quite happy with that. But if you wish to change it, you can change it here. If you click on the output name that it's provided for you, you can actually change where it saves the video file. For this example, I'm quite happy for it to save to the desktop. So I'll select desktop and I'll keep the file name as YouTube export. And if I look a little bit further down, it gives me a summary of the specifications of the video file. And then if I look further down again, there's an effects tab. And this is where you can actually apply certain effects to your overall timeline, which I'm not going to do in this particular example. The next tab is the video setting. This is where you could change the width and height again, which I don't want to touch because I already have it set up to the exact requirements. And as you can see, it's selected the 29.97 uh, frame rate, which is virtually 30 frames per second. If by chance I change my mind at this point and want to use a different frame rate, I can deselect the tick and manually change my frame rate to any other. But again, for this example, I'm quite happy at 29.97. There's options down further below for the TV standard being NTSC and PAL, which aren't really applicable when we're dealing with YouTube. So you can leave it on either there. There's an aspect ratio field, which you leave set to square pixels. And then further down, we have a profile option, which we will leave set to high and level at 4.2. Now the next setting is optional, but if you're wanting the best possible quality, you'd select the render at maximum depth option. Now, if you do this, it is going to take a little bit longer to render, but you will get slightly better image quality. The next options are the bitrate settings. Now, because we chose the YouTube option, it has given us a VBR one pass, but if you wanna improve the quality, you can actually select VBR two pass. And again, this will improve the overall quality, but unfortunately increase the rendering time. And then you can change your target bitrate, which is set to 16 by 16. Uh, for YouTube, this is about right. If you go much higher, YouTube may have a hard time compressing your video. So you're probably best leaving that where it is. And then if you scroll a little bit further down, you'll see another option that allows you to use maximum render quality. And again, if you don't mind waiting a little bit longer for the render itself, it's probably best to select that option. And the final thing you're going to do before you run your export, you're just going to click on the audio tab and double check that the audio format is AAC, which it should be if you had selected the YouTube video format in the previous step. Uh, you'll leave the audio quality to high, the bit rate to 320 KBS, and that should pretty much do it. Once you've done all this, there's one last thing you can do and you can determine whether you want to render out your entire work area or the sequence in out which will ensure you're only rendering the in and out points and nothing extra. Once you've done this, you can consider adding some metadata to your video file, but this again is not necessary. And then you can either click Q or export. If you click on Q, it will queue up your video ready for rendering, but won't start rendering until you actually initiate it further down the track. And theoretically that means you could go back and continue to work on other video edits. But for this example, I've completely finished my video editing for the day. So I will simply click on the export option and your video will now start to export ready for upload to YouTube. Thanks for watching. I hope you got some value out of this video. If there's anything that still remains unclear, any questions you have about what you've just seen, 
feel free to put them in the comments box below and I'll endeavor to get back to you as soon as I can. Also, if you've got any requests for future videos, anything you'd like to see me cover, whether it be application uh, tutorials such as the one you've just seen, product reviews, app reviews, or anything else in general, even if you'd like to see some vlogs on topics um, that are related to technology and creativity, anything that you think might be useful to you, I'd love to hear about it, put them in the comments box below and certainly I'll consider them for future releases. Also, for those of you that have been subscribing to the channel, liking the videos and commenting, I really appreciate your support, so keep that coming. It goes a long way into ensuring the ongoing success of the channel and provides me with much encouragement and support to keep going. So once again, thanks very much. Until next time, bye for now.